Hello and welcome to another Prismian Fiber Optic how-to video. My name is Sandy Many and in today's video I'm going to show you how to remove the sheath of a Prismian flex tube cable in preparation for splicing. In a moment I'll run you through the construction of the flex tube cable. It is a little bit different from the conventional loose tube cable and these differences need to be taken into account when you're removing the sheath from this cable. The diagram I'm showing you is a cross-sectional drawing of a typical flex tube cable. In the centre here we have the flex tube modules, the fibre modules, and clearly the number of modules depends on the fibre count of the cable. Interspersed amongst these modules are water swelling yarns to prevent the longitudinal passage of water in case the sheath gets broken during service. Outside this we've got a layer of Kevlar and this is the main strength member in the cable. Beyond that there is a layer of water swelling tape and then a black polyethylene jacket. And then finally we have a blue nylon termite resistant jacket. You might notice that there's no central strength member in the cable but there are these two longitudinal peripheral GRP glass reinforced plastic strength members and we need to deal with these when we actually open up the sheath of the cable. And the other thing you might notice is that there's no rip cord in the cable. So again, this means we need to use some slightly different techniques when we come to opening up the cable. And I'll show you these in a moment. There are two special tools that we use in opening the cable that you may be less familiar with. The first is this cabby fix or G stripper. It's commonly called a G stripper. And we use that to longitudinally cut the sheath as we would use a rip cord but since there's no rip cord in the cable we use this tool. The other tool that we use is a common plumbing tool. It's a pipe cutter and we use this cutter to make a circumferential cut around the sheath to cut through the GRP longitudinal strength members at the point that we're going to remove the sheath back to. It is a very neat way of making this cut now this particular brand, Rigid, is particularly good. It's commonly available in plumbing shops and the wheel on this, on this tool is very sharp and cuts through very, very well. There are some other cheaper tools available which have blunter wheels and simply do not work as well. So if you can get hold of this particular brand, we think it's a good one. There are different sizes. This is quite a large tool. There are other smaller sizes which could be more appropriate for smaller cables. When you come to strip the sheath of the cable, it's important that you remember the two strength members that are embedded in the sheath. Now these two strength members give the cable a preferential bend, so it's easy enough to find out where they are. If I bend the cable like this, I know that the strength members are on the sides here. Now when I come to strip the cable and I use the cabby fix or the, the G stripper to slit the sheath, it needs to be running on the top and on the bottom here so it stays well away from those strength members. It's also important to make a bit of a test cut on the end to make sure that you don't go too deep with the cut. This screwdriver is here so that we can adjust the depth of cut if we need to. So I'll just make a test cut on the last 100 millimeters or so of the cable just to check the depth. So I'm just going to apply the tool compress it onto the cable and then slide it along. I'm getting old and weak. And then we do it on the underside. Again we need to compress the tool. Slide it along. And then just use the pliers to compress where we've made the cut. And you can, I can see through here that actually I've gone through to the cable core but I've actually, because there's no bits of fluff on the blade, I can see that I haven't gone too deep. So having done that, we can move on to the next step. Now the next step is to actually use the pipe cutter to cut through the glass fiber strength members at the point we want to strip back to. So that, that's the two meter mark. Now we apply the pipe cutter onto the cable in the normal way. If you've ever used 
one on a plumbing pipe and all I'm doing now I've just tightened up the screw so it's just touching on the sheath now I'm going to give it about half a turn and I'll do two turns around another half a turn two turns around and I'm listening for cracks I'll get two cracks when the um, strength members break but once I've got the two cracks I know I've gone through the strength members I don't need to go any further There's one, and there's the other. I'll take this off, and I can just check that they've gone because I'll be able to, there we go, I can flex the cable. So that's as far as you want to go. You don't want to go too far. You don't want this cutter to go into the core of the cable and to destroy the fibers. So that's all we need to do. Now having done that, we go back to the cabby fix tool and we just apply this onto the cable, making sure we're on the top by bending the cable. And we start at the point that we've cut from. And then we just draw the tool back slowly. This is good for developing the muscles in the arms. Then we go back again, and we do the same on the underside. I've stripped the sheath down now using the cabby fix or, or G stripper tool. And what I can do is to bend back the two halves, unzip the two halves of the sheath and snap them off. Taking care not to damage the modules inside. The Lindstrom colors are good for just cutting through this part. a reasonably neat end. Now what we need to do is to cut back the Kevlar, so we've got a length of about 170 millimeters. I'll just cut that here. The length isn't critical because we trim it again when we fit the, the gland. But it is helpful to try and keep the Kevlar in good order, not all tangled up, as it makes it very difficult if it gets tangled up. There are lots of other yarns that we la that we need to the water swelling yarns we need to remove from the cable as well because we don't want all of those in the gland. Now I've done that. I've got all the Kevlar's here. I'm going to cut the core wrap up at the butt here, butt end, and I'm going to gradually pull out. The water swelling yarns as well because we need to get rid of those. Just be careful, these uh, water swelling yarns can stick a bit to the modules. You don't want to 
tear the module when you remove these yarns. So just take it easy. Okay, I think that's it. I've got them all now. This needs to just be. And there we have. We've got the Kevlar here. It's about 200 millimeters, which is enough. And then we've got the modules here. Now this is all ready for the gland to be installed.